<laughs> hey folks, Tim here, FT Lot for the love of trains. Welcome back, thanks for watching. Uh, I know it's been a while, but uh, I want to get right into it. I want to show you the progress I've been making on my drop bridge here. Uh, I've gotten it a little bit further, but not as far as I've wanted to because I've been a little distracted by some train shows and some new things that I bought. And I kind of started working on another area of my layout, just all of a sudden got inspired to do it. So um, why don't we go right into it and I'll show you where I'm at. Let's go! Okay, so I was able to get track on and I am putting a crossover right on my drop bridge. It just seemed like it was the best place, the most accessible place I could do it. Um, okay, so I've got this L bracket in here, and of course our switch there. And as I raise the, the bridge up, that'll run that in. Oh, let me get that straight. And then that locks in, pushes that button down, and allows the tracks to be powered on the bridge and beyond the bridge on either side okay so I've gotten some of the framework in obviously it's gonna go into a tunnel right here and what I've done is I've just bought a piece of uh, metal flashing and put it up along the water heater here just in case there's a flame out or anything from the water heater it's not gonna catch my my bench work on fire so and then I'll probably put another piece over the top of it since that's part of the exhaust and that would get a little hot um, but yeah that part's pretty well done okay so just to show you the wiring under here uh, my power's coming in this direction um, I'm going through a terminal block here and then that's what's going up to my switch to control the power and then out from here will go through under here and then I've just soldered some leads up to the tracks let's just kind of take you on the underside here and yep that's me getting crazy with the torch again and then to power this other side I come down and I'm actually powering the latches themselves so once once you get your section up there and you lock, lock these in then that will power the the next section of track um, so all in all this thing works pretty well um, I'm pretty happy with it okay so some of my other distractions that I've had here is I've been going through and weathering all my cars that I'm putting out obviously those Sioux lines are not but I've been weathering all my cars that I've been putting out on the railroad um, uh, rusting them, doing some patches, um, just some miscellaneous stuff. I think they're coming out really well. Uh, let me show you some stuff on the bottom. Again, there's a little bit more weathering. Some cars I've had to redo, like this car I've redone a couple different times. I wasn't happy with it. Um, but again, I've been having a lot of fun doing them really trying to make them look nice and dirtied up um, and then I did get a couple of engines here All right, I found a uh, Intermountain ES44 AC in the there we go Kansas City Southern paint scheme um, figured those would go really good with my my TFM SD70 Max um, makes kind of a nice set there. All right, I was able to pick up a Broadway Limited AC6000 um, Canadian Pacific that I can lash up with my uh, General Electric uh, Green Monster. So those two run nice together. I try to put my, my Broadways together just because they seem to run really nice together. I've done the same thing with my two Broadways I have down here as well. Uh, basically a fantasy Southern Pacific uh, UP patch and a UP 
AP engine but both AT6000s were sound. So in my crossover area up top here, I added a switch right here, um, where that SC40-2 is on. Um, and then this is going into my staging. This track used to go up into a, 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 la a yard ladder, but I've taken that out and then I've added that switch down there and then this runs it separate separate line here and then there's a, a dead end track and then a little stub to an industry here and this is going to be my um, couple of chemical facilities that I have here and then I'll have a bunch of tankers that I could drop off here and there and then this is just that from the other side some old orange juice containers back in the old school when they used to just paint it gray if anybody remembers frozen orange juice. Um, and then this is Star Chemicals. And then this is uh, Johnson Industrial Chemical Products. So those two are kind of going to be my chemical area. All right, so kind of a lot that I've been working on. Um, of course, I probably should be working on just finishing my upper level so I can run trains around, but when I got distracted with the chemical area, I really got inspired to start working on that, so that's where I kind of focused a lot of my attention. Um, I'll see what I can do to try to finish this area um, and let you know. This weekend I got my, once a year I do my G-Scale train at a local town celebration, so again I'll be setting that up, so I'll maybe doing a video on that. Uh, that's always fun for the kids in the community. So, uh, thanks again for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, until the next time, 